As you might expect from a legend like Martha Stewart, she's lived in some beautiful properties over the years. I mean, her brand is all about cooking and home decor, so she makes sure the places that she calls home also match her image. Whether it's an upscale Hamptons retreat, a massive farmhouse, or a historic vacation home, Martha is living in style. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Martha Stewart is an American icon. Not only has she spent time as an entrepreneur, but she's also a world famous television personality and one time model inmate who over the years of her decade spanning career has earned a net worth estimated to be in the range of 400 million dollars. These days the Martha Stewart brand is still an integral part of Americana. So in that way, it's pretty fitting to discover that Martha has homes located all around the northeastern seaboard of the United States. In fact, she's been growing her real estate profile since the 70s and over the years it's expanded to include half a dozen properties, only a few of which she actually actually spends much time in herself. For instance, the first property she ever picked up was a gigantic farmhouse located in Westport, Connecticut. Shortly after, she purchased another sprawling estate when she found a property located in the hamlet of Cotona. And then there's Martha's stunning woodland retreat located on Mount Desert Island known as Skyland. And that's only the beginning of her homes. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, this time checking out the homes of none other than Martha Stewart. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Martha Stewart's first home became a labor of love between her and her then husband Andrew, who purchased this gigantic farmhouse together way back when in 1971 for the amazingly low price of just $46,750. Those were the days. At the time, they had dreams of turning what was already on this two acre plot into the perfect family home, but the original residence was in rough shape. First built back in 1805, by the time Martha got there, not only did the property have a seriously neglected backyard, but the picket fence was in shambles, the kitchen was in total disarray, and there was no porch, garage, driveway, or even a working toilet. Regardless, the couple got to work and undertook much of the renovations themselves. By 1975, the couple decided to expand further. They bought the lot located next to theirs for another $47,000. This time, they added two additional greenhouses, a chicken coop, an all seasons garden and a massive veggie garden, turning their home into a full fledged farm. Now in terms of the interior of the main house, the original structure boasted three bedrooms and two bathrooms, but Martha would expand that count to five bedrooms and four and a half bathrooms, increasing the overall square footage to 6,710 square feet. Martha was so hands on during the reno, she even got down on her hands and knees to stencil the wooden floors while also painting the remarkable mural that highlights the front hallway. Since moving here and undertaking all of these renovations, Turkey Hill as it's come to be known is what many people consider to be Martha's most iconic home. Not only did Martha fill its halls with some of her most enviable antiques, but it was in this very house that Martha would write several of her first cookbooks, including Entertaining, which gave her fans an in-depth look at her dining room. This was complete with her grandmother's china and even her mother-in-law's silver. Martha would live in this house for 30 years. She only moved out and started spending time in her litany of other properties in 2007. At that point, she sold the farmhouse for $6.7 million. Dubbed Cantito Corners, Martha Stewart's current sprawling farmhouse is 153 acres of land that she purchased back in 2000 for the whopping price of $15.2 million and located in Bedford, New York. Sold to Martha by the family of Ruth Sharp, a millionaire who had owned the property for 50 years before her passing, this estate is composed of several buildings strewn throughout the immense grounds, making it look more like a village than say a home. <laughs> when staying on this property, Martha resides in a three-story farmhouse first built in 1925 and often referred to as the Winter House. This structure features a spacious front porch, a fireplace, and stylish dormer windows. After taking on the property, Martha reached out to architect Alan Greenberg 
Gutenberg to expand the main farmhouse. Not only did he turn an old garage that used to hold farming equipment into a brand new entertaining space just off the kitchen, but he also took a nearby barn and turned it into an office project room for Martha's endless amounts of arts and crafts. In addition to Martha's main residence, there's also a colonial structure that dates back to 1770, which once served as the original home for the property called, poetically enough, summer house. There's also a cottage, a guest house known as Maple Avenue House, and a more contemporary home built towards the back of the property. Rounding things out are a series of horse stalls, barns, and greenhouses. And for a finishing touch, Martha imported cobblestone from Elizabeth, New Jersey, the state where she was born and raised, to pave the courtyards throughout the property. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, those two homes are fantastic. But when Martha's looking to get away for a little R&R, she also has a couple of vacation properties that are also enviable. Let's start with her historic house located in May. Martha calls it Skylands and it sits on Mount Desert Island. Like many of Martha's other homes, this property is steeped in history. Completed in 1925 for Edsel and Eleanor Ford of the Ford Motor Company, Skylands is sprawled across 63 acres of pristine woodland. The Ford family would summer here every year until 1980. 17 years later, Martha would buy the property for herself for $5.4 million in 1997. At the time of the sale, everything in the home was included, which meant that Martha didn't have to buy a single plate, even though she's no doubt added her share over the years. The massive stone house sits on top of a hill and contains a dozen bedrooms alongside 8.5 baths and nearly 15,000 square feet of space. It also includes granite paving throughout the interior, beamed ceilings as well. Rounding out the additional spaces is a cathedral-like main hall, a sun-filled living room, a cool flower room, a stunning library, and a kitchen to die for. But as eye-catching as the interior of this place is, when Martha's spending time here, it's really all about those views. Over the years, Martha has taken to spending more and more of her free time here, and it's gradually become the favorite of her many homes. In 2015, she decided to expand the property by purchasing a $4.2 million six-acre neighboring estate called Ox Hill Law. This addition may be less grand than Skylands, but it still includes a main residence that boasts nine bedrooms, 7.5 bathrooms, and roughly 6,800 square feet of living space. Finally, we've come to Martha's Hamptons escape. She fell in love with the Hamptons during a summer spent at Kurt Vonnegut's home in the 90s and became so enchanted with the idea of living there that she found her own slice of heaven and purchased what has come to be known as Lily Pond Lane in 1995 for $3 million. First built in 1873, this shingled cottage space is just a 10 minute walk from the beach and at one point featured some truly stunning rose gardens that Martha eventually ripped out, worrying about the potential safety of her grandchildren. Much like with most of her other properties, once Martha moved in, she began to renovate thoroughly. While keeping many of the original fixtures to retain as much charm of the property as possible, Martha would touch up the cracked plaster ceiling, add additional windows to provide further natural lighting, and she even added a fresh coat of paint to replace the white walls with warmer buttercream tones. Meanwhile, outside is a garden lover's paradise. Not only are there gorgeously green private hedges, there are also trees and plants that run for about as far as the eye can see. In the event that gardening isn't your cup of tea, then you can spend time in either the gigantic pool or the even bigger front porch that houses a dining table capable of seating as many as 60 guests. Over the years, Martha would come here whenever she needed a little time to get away from it all. But being the busy person that she is, that didn't wind up happening all that often. As such, Martha eventually decided to sell this property for $8.4 million in 2021. All right, guys. Guys, that's gonna bring this look at four of Martha Stewart's most remarkable properties to a close. Which one do you think suits Martha best? It's hard to choose, but maybe I'll go with her first farmhouse or her Hamptons getaway. Anyways, be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.